One more time, one more time. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. In the atmosphere, we declare. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's an awesome. Sing to Jesus. He is awesome. My God is awesome. He's awesome. Yes, he's awesome. Hallelujah. He's awesome. My God is awesome. He's awesome. Hallelujah. My God is awesome. Come on, just high five your neighbor. Give your neighbor a high five and say, My God is awesome. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He's wonderful this morning. I'm glad that you came this morning. I'm glad that you're here this morning. You know, I just want to thank God for the people who work so diligently and and so I encourage you this morning that we serve a God that is more than able to see us through. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, today's your day for a ridiculous blessing. Let's turn to the book of, of St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. Chapter 5, and we want to read... This is a familiar passage of scripture. I just got over this word this morning, a ridiculous blessing. Ridiculous blessing. Chapter 5 of the gospel said, Luke, and we want to read from verse 1. And when you have it, would you say Amen. You can look at the screen if you want to. It's on the screen. On one occasion, while the crowd, I'll read from the screen. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. And getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to pull out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he, had, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. I want to thank God for the reading of his word today. Put out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. I believe this morning that God is getting ready to do something so powerful and so something that is so awesome in your life. I told one of my leaders that it's sometime during the course of the week that I truly believe, amen, that something is happening in the spiritual realm. And I believe this morning, hear me now, don't just look at what is taking place in the physical. I want you to hear something that is happening in the, spiritual, in the spiritual realm that we must understand here today. Because we, our walk is not just a fleshly walk. It's not just living in this world. Our walk is a spiritual one. And so therefore this morning, our spiritual air must be in tune to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And he's saying to us that we as a church, we as a body of Christ, we must get ready, amen, for something that is about to happen that is going to be awesome. Are you hearing me? 
that you wouldn't believe it if, if, if even God would have come and tell you. It'd be something that you just wouldn't believe. In fact, the Lord says, tell my people, I'm getting ready to release upon the church and upon every child of God a ridiculous blessing into their lives. Hello, somebody. A ridiculous blessing. Blessings come in, in different forms and fashion. And however God chooses to bless you, that's the area that I believe, amen, that he sees fit to bless you. Some may be financial needs. Some may be the needs, amen, vary for different people. But God says that he's going, amen, to bring forth in your life a ridiculous blessing. And so as a, as a, as a servant of the Lord this morning, I prophesy. And I declare to you right now that God is going to send some ridiculous blessing in your life. How many of you have faith to receive that this morning? I'm going to believe God for this ridiculous blessing. What, let me break it down this morning to just touch on this a little bit. What is, what is the meaning of the word ridiculous? It means absurd, outrageous, lucrous, unbelievable. In other words, something that caused you to laugh because you really don't understand why this is happening. You know, sometimes you receive something, whether by mail, and you understand, well, how come I get this? Or why is this blessing come my way? It's just that type of blessing. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. How come they could bypass all the people with all the qualification and give me the job? Are you hearing me, somebody? I've been there and I know what a ridiculous blessing is all about. Sometimes you had to do nothing. Amen. But God will grant you a ridiculous blessing. God is getting ready to bless you in such a ridiculous way that if somebody were to just tell you right now what he's going to do, it would seem crazy and outrageous. It was going to be unbelievable to you that you would prefer maybe fall out and just go on laughing because it's just that kind of blessing, ridiculous. How many desire that kind of blessing? You see, when you cry all the cry and go through all the suffering and all the pain, you welcome a ridiculous blessing. When you have gone through what you've been going through, amen, and it's tough and it's difficult, you would welcome a ridiculous blessing that God can cause you to turn around. God can mend, amen. God can fix whatever it may be that you're faced with. God could do something that is ridiculous this morning. That's the type of temperament and faith that we must have this morning. That God is more than able. Tell your neighbor he's able. I want you to ask your neighbor another question this morning. Say, neighbor, can you handle a ridiculous blessing? Is it because there are blessings? Then there are great blessings, and then there is the ridiculous blessings. I don't know about you, but I, I like blessing, but I just don't want the blessing. I have seen some great blessings, and I welcome that. But at this point in my life, I'm not getting younger in body, but in spirit, yes. So I, I, I desire to have a ridiculous blessing. Are you hearing me? So I'm just saying on a practical aspect, I have seen a lot of old gray hair men driving some nice vehicle. And you can say, well, they work hard all of their life to drive this nice vehicle. You understand what I'm saying? So you can say, well, okay, they work for it and they'll save up the bite or just the rich. But why it is a guy like me can't drive one and don't have to work all these years to get one? I, I'm trying to get you to a point, are you hearing me? That you don't have to wait a long time, amen, for the desires of a heart to be fulfilled. When God says you're going to bring a ridiculous blessing, that's what I'm talking about. You could work as much as you want, amen. This ridiculous blessing have nothing to do with how many years you work or how much you save. God just is going to bless you this morning. I hear, that's the type of blessing that we desire this morning. I just wonder, is there anyone in the house who's ready for a ridiculous blessing? The Bible tells us, in verse 1 of the Gospel of 
pass in Luke chapter 5 verse 1 and it came to pass if you have a highlight or a pen just 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 underline that sentence or phrase and it came to pass it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Let me stop right here this morning for somebody that's a word you needed this morning to hear. If you didn't hear anything else, I mean as I preach on in this message this morning, you got enough to get through whatever you're going through this morning. That's why I always hold to this phrase, and this too shall come to pass. The Bible is saying, and it came to pass this morning I, I wish somebody could understand what God is saying to us this morning tell your neighbor it's going to come to pass that means what you're going through this morning or what you're facing in your life is not permanent it's just temporary just get somebody and say it's just temporary because this what you're going through is going to come to pass are you hear me it didn't come to stay it came to pass and I don't care what you are going through this morning. The Lord told me to tell you it's temporary. It's not eternal. Hallelujah, somebody. I, that's a place that you show and you give God the best ridiculous praise. Because I want you to let go beyond reasoning. Because I'm in hell and in high water. I'm in the fiery furnace. I'm in the lion's den. I'm in the storm of life. But God is saying to me, while I'm in this place, God said it's going to come to pass. I'll get somebody to believe leave with me this morning it's not permanent it's temporary this morning what you're going through is just temporary hallelujah because if god tell you it's temporary it give you an opportunity to breathe come take a deep breath this morning some of you need it this morning because sometimes the situation that we have faced is so overwhelming this morning that all we can see I mean, is the problem and the difficulty. But if God comes and tells you, he said, daughter, I, son, I want you to know it's not eternal. It's going to come to pass. That's a place to rejoice. You see, no, no, no storm lasts forever. The wind will, will, will quit blowing. The rain will stop and the sun will shine again. Are you hearing me, somebody? I said the rain will stop, the wind will stop. It will be sunshine again this morning. No storm lasts forever. You see, let me break it down a little more this morning. Before you ever went into the trial or the situation that you were in presently, God already marked it on his calendar when it would end this morning. Hallelujah, somebody. Tell your neighbor, it wouldn't be long now. Hallelujah. Because God has an ending date for what you're going through. And I want you to know when that ending date come, amen, you're going to be revived. You're going to be refreshed. You're going to be whole. You're going to have blessings upon your life because you have made it true this morning tell your neighbor hold on this morning then it says they pressed upon him to hear the word of God not only that it came to pass they press so there is a pressing that you and I have to do in other words we got to go beyond how we feel we got to go beyond what the situation is actually is up in our face and all I can see is the situation I got to go beyond that and hear what the word of God is saying you see, the most important thing in your life is the word of God. Not money. Are you hearing me? Not all the materialistic things that you could ever need. That's not the most important thing. Because you can have all of that and still, it may be broken. You can still, it may be empty. Are you hearing me this morning? And so what we need, the most important things in our life is the word of God. Because I want you to know this one. I have experienced this in my own life and come to this conclusion in my own life as an individual. The answer to every problem in my life or in our life will come from the word of God. Are you hearing me this morning? I says every answer to every problem problem that you and I face for those who are watching via the internet let me say this to you this morning any problem that you face amen the answer is in the word and you need to hear the word this morning you see that's why the devil will do everything this morning to keep you away from hearing the word this morning sometimes you don't want to be a wrong people who will speak the word because the word will aggravate you because why if you tend to hold to just the natural concept you wouldn't want to hear the word but I want you to that is what 
what you need to hear it's the word of God because in the word of God is the answer and the solution to every problem that we are facing in life you see I'm passionate of when I say this this morning because it's not just you see when I preach to you I preach to myself and I have more confidence now because of what I've been through and what God has done for me because I adhere to his word are you hearing me? As some people say, the proof is in the pudding. Because I see and I know and have experienced that one word from God can change around every situation. That's why the Bible tells us that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That is why it is important this morning where you go to church. Did pastor say that? Yes. It is important to where you go to church. And the preaching and teaching that you're going to sit under. Not every church preach the unadulterate word of God. Many churches today are preaching a watered down gospel. There is no power of the Holy Ghost. There's entertainment. There is, there is flair and glamour but no power. And we need to be in a place where preach, amen, preach divine healing. Not every church preaches on, on divine healing or pro, pro, biblical prosperity. Not every church preaches the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. I believe today that each child of God needs the Holy Spirit to reside and live in them. Because it's the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the Bible says that he gives, he sent so that he will walk with us throughout our daily living this morning. And when we adhere to the word of God, it's like saying and green with the psalmist David that the word is a, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pad this morning. Somebody said we need the word. You need to be in a church where there's an uncompromising word of God preached in the power of the Holy Spirit without fear or reservation this morning. Are you hearing me? The same gospel is able to touch whoever this morning. This gospel is not segregated to a, only, a, only a certain class of people. This gospel can reach anybody. And it's for everybody who will receive it this morning. And the Bible says that, And they saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Did you see that? When I read this, I thought about all the ministers... That for one reason or another have left their ministry. They have left their pulpits and basically said, I'm done. First of all, ministry is not an easy thing. We were even joking about that yesterday. That while we were barbecuing, you know, pastor always either close to the fire or something like that was being said. Ministry is not an easy thing. But to desire ministry is to choose a difficult life. Hear me now. Let me be careful this morning. But I want you to understand. The rewards are many. But there is also a lot of pain and heartache in ministry. If you are going to be in ministry. In other words you got to have a tough hide and a soft heart. Are you hearing me this morning? A tough hide and a soft heart. Let me speak to specifically to men and women of God who are in ministry right now for one reason or another, you have become discouraged. Because I believe that every child of God ought to be in ministry. There's a calling upon each life. There's a specific thing that God wants you to do, not just be a believer and sit down with all the word that is in you. I believe that God has is teaching us so that we can go out in the marketplace, wherever that marketplace are in your life, and so that you can be a witness for Him. Are you hear me? You can tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. So let me speak to each person this morning who have reached a place because of whatever situation you have been discouraged in your life, and you are at a point right now of saying, "I'm going to throw in the towels." I'm not saying that you're going to turn your back on God. Just getting out of ministry because it's difficult. Because there are people who just don't want to be involved, but they just want to sit back or be laid back. I believe in God, but I don't want to deal with ministry because ministry is too difficult. 
follow me this morning. Maybe because people have hurt you. Or maybe you have been lied on. Maybe somebody has stabbed you in the back this morning. Or maybe you have been taken advantage of by somebody. Maybe or you just feel like nothing you're doing is working. Have you ever been in a place where you're trying everything or doing your best, but it's still like it's not good enough? Is anybody there this morning? You're trying, you're trying, you're trying. God knows that you're trying, but it seems everything you're doing is not working. God is speaking to you this morning. You feel like, sometimes you feel like you're banging your head against the wall. But I just came to tell you in these simple words this morning, don't quit. Don't walk away from what you know that God has called you to do. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, don't quit. Don't give up this morning. Because the devil will do everything possible, amen, to cause you to come to a place to want to give up or throw in the towels. And he will show you. He will show you what you're doing, but it's not working. And you're doing your best. And it's not working. And he will remind you that you're doing your best, but it's not working. Give up. That's how sneaky and how subtle the enemy will come. That he will come at a point in time that you see that you're vulnerable because you're trying your best and it's not working out. He's going to tell you, give up. Tell your neighbor, hold on this morning. Hold on. Hold on this morning. Hold on. Jesus never said that it would be easy this morning. He said to count the cost. Tell anybody count the cost. You see, there's a blessing waiting just around the corner. Just over the next hilltop. Has some, God has something prepared for you that will make it worth it all. How many believe that God amen, has something that he's going to give to you. That regardless of what you have been through and all the toughness of you have been through. God says what he's going to give to you will worth it all. Tell your neighbor it's worth it all. Hold on. It's going to come to you. Because when God gives you something this morning, when, when you get that something this morning, you're going to forget all your problems. That's why in the scripture it tells us and it gives reference to a woman that is making a baby. And even the psalmist David says, weeping may be endured for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It's like a woman in her, her travail, I mean, as she's given birth, it is painful. But the moment that child is born, joy comes into her face, amen. And she embraces the child, she forget the pain that she's going. That's the type of thing, that the way that God is going to do for you this morning. That you're going to forget the pain that you experience, hallelujah, through the trials and testing. He said, joy is coming to you this morning. Are you hearing me this morning? I'm talking about a ridiculous blessing. Tell your neighbor a ridiculous blessing. Be wary, amen. Be not wary in doing well, but in due season you shall reap if you faint not this morning. Let's look at the scripture. The Bible says, as he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now the word is not just on the seashore speaking. Now the word has entered Peter's boat. It has entered into Peter's boat. It is one thing to hear the word. And it's another thing to get the word in your heart. Are you hearing? Because everybody here is hearing me preach the word. Those who watch and the internet. But not everybody is going to receive this word in their heart. But the Bible tells us that the word entered into Peter's boat in reference to what that means to us this morning. That we must hear this word and not just be a hearers of the word. The word must register in our heart that we will take action based on the word of God. It is not the, it is not the word you hear preach. It is not even the word that, that's in the Bible that changed your life. It's the word that gets in your heart. I remember someone told me recently, and I said to that person, I believe that God is true to his word. And I believe that God is able to turn situation around. You see, because I cannot preach this gospel if I don't believe. 
I'm not just going to read or preach what I've read in the Bible. I got to believe it that it is workable and applicable to every situation that we face in our life this morning. And you got to come, you and I have to come to that point in life where we're not just going to hear the word, but we're going to respond to the word. And the word is going to get into our business this morning. Because if we fail, to apply the principles of God's word in our situation, we are doomed for failure. Hello, somebody. Many people want the victory but without standing on the principles of God's word. But you see, if we desire to walk in the victory that God has given to us, we must apply the principles of God's word. Are you hearing me? You may still have to go through some rough waters. But you see, when you're going through rough waters, God is teaching you how to navigate through the rough seas of your life. Are you hearing me this morning? So that in the next, in the next episode in your life, that when problem comes, you will not be the same. You will know how to navigate through the water. That's why people can see you shouting and laughing and rejoice and wondering what wrong with you. Like they're going crazy. It's not that they're going crazy. It's just a ridiculous praise. Because I know that when I was going through some stuff in my life, and God showed me what to do. And now that I'm faced with some problem, I know what I should do. I'm going to rejoice evermore. Because my God is able. My God is able this morning. Tell your neighbor, my God is able. The Bible says, the word that I've hid in my heart, that I will not sin against thee. It has to get in your heart this morning. The word is a seed that God uses to bring blessings into our life. Are you hearing me? That's why we need to spend time in his word. Are you hearing me? We spend time in everything else. Why not spend some time in the Word? In this book, has the solution and the answer to everything that we are going through. That's why it is called upon us to search it out. Are you hearing me this morning? Search it out. Spend time in this word. Be so caught up into the word. And believe God what he's saying. Because my Bible tells me that God is not a liar. What he says, it will come to pass. Are you hearing me? I got to believe that for myself. I got to believe it for my wife. I got to believe it for my children. I got to believe it for my household. I got to believe it for this ministry. I got to believe it for everyone this morning. Because if I preach to you, I preach on what the word of God says. And I believe that it can change and affect your life this morning. Some of you, you're going through the, amen, you're going like, going through hell on earth at this point in time. And you wonder why you're going through that is because God is a setup. Because sometimes you may not understand all the cries and all the pain and all the tears this morning. But God have a way that he uses what you go through to accelerate you, to propel you, to catapult you into a different dimension of your faith this morning. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> Whatever it is this morning. Healing, prosperity, deliverance this morning, promotion, great anointing, household salvation that we'll be praying for. It all comes through the word of God. But we have to go a step further. It's not enough just to, to have the word in our heart. We must be doers of the word this morning. Not just hearers of the word. Tell your neighbor, we got to be doers of the word. You see, the Bible tells us in James chapter 1 verse 22. To be a hearer of the word and not a doer is to deceive yourself. Uh, well, I'm a Christian, you know. But are you putting the word to practice? You can quote the word, I'm a believer, but are you putting the word to practice? Every son and every daughter of the kingdom of God, amen, must not just quote the word, but they must put the word into practice. That's why the Bible says a man, amen, who is just a hearer of the word will look at his face in a mirror and he will see himself. But the moment he left, the, amen, and walk away from the mirror, he forgets all about himself. But a man who is not only a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word, the Bible tells us that whatever that man put his hands to do is going to prosper. 
Tell him, may you be a doer of the word. We got to be a doer of the word. Matthew 7 and 26 tells us, And everyone that heareth these sins of mine and doing them not shall be like unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And when the storms of life came against that house, it fell and great was the fall. But a man who is a hearer of the word and a doer of the word, when the storms of life come, your house will be able to stand. And whatever you're building this morning, it could be your, be your family, it could be your ministry, it could be a marriage, it could, whatever you're building. If you build on the word of God this morning, it's going to stand against the, the storms of life. Hello, somebody. And so it is important this morning. You see, Peter could have sailed all over the lake with the incarnate word in his boat and nothing would have changed. What I'm saying this morning, you could declare I have Jesus in my, in my life and you could go from one place to another. It would, do, it would do you nothing just to have Jesus on your boat. It would not go, do us any good just to say I believe in Jesus this morning. He could have even heard every word he said and still his boat and his net would have never be filled with fish. It's not just okay just to be a child of God and say, I go to church and I hear the word. Are you hearing me, somebody? He had to obey the word. Tell anybody we got to obey. We got to obey this morning. We got to obey the word. Obey the word. Are you hearing me? We have a generation, amen, that has been established. They don't care to live by the principles of the word of God. We have a generation who had believed in God and now they are pulling away from believing the word of God. And that's why we are seeing things in our society have fallen apart. Are you hearing me? We got to stand upon the word. That's why even though I grew up in the old church, growing up, them, the old fathers and mothers believed the word of God. That's why when they go in the prayer meeting, amen, they will say, God says that he's able to save my children. And they will cry before God and they will remind God what his word says. Because why? They didn't just hear us of the word, but they were doers of the word. They believed the word. And they obeyed the word this morning. And God is calling upon the church this morning to walk in obedience to what he says. I'm preaching about a ridiculous blessing. Tell your neighbor a ridiculous blessing is coming. But I just can't just tell you about the blessing. I've got to show you how to get in position to receive it. Somebody today is like Peter. Was on that day, they are looking at the empty boats, the empty nets. What you catch, Peter? Nothing. The question was asked to Peter, what did he catch? Because he did went out fishing all night. And he was an experienced fisherman. He knows the waters. He knows when to catch the fish. He had the, the physical skills and experience. But the Bible said, Jesus asked him, what did you catch? From a man like Peter, at least if he had catch one fish, it would have still be something. But when he answered and replied back to Jesus, I caught nothing. And you see, we got to come to a point in, uh, uh, to this understanding. You will be trying on your own and all you're seeing is everything empty. You try to do it on your own. But you will always come up empty. What you got, Peter? Nothing. It's one thing to have something. And it's another thing to entirely have nothing. Are you hearing me? Something is, it's not the job I want, but at least I'm working. Somebody could say that. It's not the job I really want, you know, but I just thank God that I have something. Something is, it's not the house I want. But at least I have a roof over my head. Can anybody hear what I'm saying this morning? Something is, it's not the relationship that I dream of, but at least I got somebody. <laughs> Are you hearing me this morning? That is not the income that I want. 
I barely get in the, amen, the bill speed. I never have anything left over. But it's something. Tell your neighbor, it's just something. It's not a ministry that I, I felt called to, but it's still something. So it's still something. You understand what I'm saying? I may not be the place where, where I see my dreams really fulfilled before me, but at least I'm doing something so I, that something can carry me to what God has, has been saying. So tell anybody, it's still something. I still have some hope. I still have some hope. So it's still something. Are you hearing me? I'm going to make it. There's still something. Tell anybody, it's still something. I, I want you to understand what I'm saying because it's going beyond just the word something. It's something got to register in your spirit. Because if you give up and you quit, you, then you will have nothing. But you're not pointing a life. I mean, I have everything going on, but at least I have something. Are oh, you hearing me this morning? That's a message in itself this morning. I still have something. I, I want you to know I'm holding on. I may not have everything, but I'm holding on on something this morning. You see, because we got to, to flip this this morning. Because again, there is something, then there is... There's nothing. Are you hearing me? Nothing in the bank account. Nothing in even the wallet. I have a wallet, but I have nothing. How many understand what I'm saying? You know, people say, but your wallet looking fat, but it has nothing. It just has some cards and stuff, but nothing of that is important right now. No relationship. With any special someone. No ministry opportunities. What about no job? Nothing is working out. And it feels like you are swimming in quicksand. Because the harder you fight to get out of this, the lawyer keeps sinking. Against something and having nothing, which one you would prefer to have? Something. I mean, are you glad that you can still have something at this moment in your life that you can still give God praise? At least I have something. Because at least if I have something, I know God can work with something. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me this morning? We get in there, amen, because God loves to work. Even that something is minute this morning, God can work. That's why he said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can see it onto the mountain. Mountain be cast into the sea, and it will this morning, because I had something this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Peter said to Jesus, we have toiled. In other words, we have labored, we have worked hard all night and have taken or caught nothing. You may have been in a night season in your life this morning. You may be in a night season right now in your life. A season for some of you of sorrow. A season of emptiness, a season of confusion. A season of great struggle with nothing to show forth. But if you will believe, amen. This man of God here this morning, I want you to know, I prophesy to you that the season is getting ready to change. Because my Bible tells me that from the beginning of this passage, and it came to pass. Because that tells me you're going to change seasons. Are you hearing me? That tells me the temporal is going to change. Are you hearing me this morning? God is going to do it. Are you hearing me this morning? I want to tell somebody... As I said before, weeping may endure for night, but joy comes in the morning. Slap your neighbor and give them a high five this morning. Morning cometh. Tell them morning cometh this morning. Tell them joy cometh this morning. I came to tell you this morning that you're one word away from your breakthrough. One word away from your miracle. One word away from a ridiculous blessing.
Tell anybody you got to hold on. Come on, tell them, hold on. I feel change coming. I feel change coming this morning. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know how he's going to do it. But I prophesy to you, God is getting to, ready to turn it around this morning. You see, because what the devil meant for evil, God is going to make it work for your good. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Let that register in somebody's spirit. What the devil meant for evil, God is going to turn it around for your good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For somebody, that car that was giving you trouble, Every time you're giving you trouble, it has so much sentimental value sit and it keeps spending money to fix it. It's good that it breaks down and it can't work anymore because now we're driving something better. Are yeah, you hearing me, somebody? Something good is coming your way this morning. Somebody's getting ready to step into a realm of the miraculous this morning. Somebody's getting ready to get into the overflow. Hallelujah, somebody. Am I talking to somebody here this morning? Somebody's on the verge this morning of a net breaking boat sinking miracle this morning. It's going to be a ridiculous blessing. Somebody, somebody here today been holding on to your word from God for a long time. You heard the word. You believe the word. You confess the word. And still your boat is empty. Is anybody can reach with me this morning? Pastor, I did everything. I preach it, I live it, I confess it, I declare it, I eat it, I drink it. But still my boat is empty. And at this moment, that's where a lot of people come to that this moment when they feel and they know they have done everything and still the boat is empty. That's the place the devil comes in and tempt them to give up and turn the switch off their fate. But like Peter, you have fished all night and caught nothing. You have worked hard and done everything that you know how to do. Is anybody can be a witness with me? You prayed. Some of you have fasted and still there have been no manifestation. Are you hearing me? You see, I remember Elisha and his servant. When God gave Elisha word for three and a half years, the land, amen, was experiencing a drought and there was no rain for over three and a half years. And God gave Elisha word and said there's going to be a rain. And while Elisha get in a posture where his head was between his knees and he was praying, he sent his servant out and says, go look to the sea. And the servant keep going and coming back, keep going and come back with no positive answer. You see, I want you to know when you're in a place where God is in the verge to bring forth the miracle, there will be a going forth and coming, a going and back, and going and back, going, a forward Backward, forward, backward. That's the type of place that you'll find yourself. But you've got to keep faithful because Elijah didn't get discouraged. He says on the seventh time, go again. And the Bible tells us that when his servant went and he watched out, he see a cloud as small as the size of a man. That is still something. Are you hear me this morning? Are you hear me? God have a time that will give you something to hold on to. Just keep faithful. It's coming this morning. Tell your neighbor, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Don't give up this morning. You're standing on the brink of a miracle. Don't give up into feelings. Don't give it into the logical. You're one way away from your miracle. One word away from your miracle. Peter, he says, launch out into the deep. That's what Jesus told him. He says, Peter, launch out in the deep. Peter, obey and push out into the deep waters. Peter, God is, Jesus is saying, let down your net for a drought. Peter didn't have any problem with paddling out into the deep. He did that. But when Jesus said to Peter, now that you've gone out in the deep, I want you to let down your net for a drought. That's where the fight was on. Are you hearing me? Some of you will go to the steps that God is saying, but when it comes to the actual place of your breakthrough, you match breaks. 
Because it's where rubber meets the road. Pedal to the metal this morning. Because the fight is now on. Because this morning is feeling versus fate. Is reason versus fate. Is logic versus fate. It's war time. That's why I said two weeks ago, we got to become radical believers and we got to take the fight to the enemy this morning. Are you hearing me? It's going to be past experience versus fate. Disappointment and failures all testify to Peter's senses. What I'm saying to you, everything that they are concerning your breakthrough and your deliverance, the devil will remind you of the negativities. Oh, you hear me? Remind you of your failures. Remind you, didn't you fish all night? Who is the fisherman here? Jesus was a carpenter. I am a fisherman. So what he telling me about go out to the deep and cast forth my net. He didn't know I went already. There is no fish. What we fail to realize is, is the one who is speaking was the one who spoke. And he says in the beginning, hallelujah, that he says, let every living thing in the water come forth in the name of Jesus. So even if Peter had went all night and caught f- no fish, Jesus speaking to him and said, let down your draw. It would have, the fish would have hear his voice. Stop reasoning. Stop adhering to the logic. Stop listening to the disappointment this morning. And Peter, he argued with the Lord and said, Master, we have fished all night and caught nothing. What Peter was saying, in other words, was, that's ridiculous. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Jesus, that's ridiculous what you're telling me to do. What Peter was saying is in a nice way, he was saying to the Lord, I know that you are the son of God. And I know that you cast out devils this morning and healed the sick and raised the dead. But in other words, you don't know nothing about fishing. That's what in other words you were saying. That's ridiculous. I know you can heal people and I know you can raise raise up the dead and all of these things. But that's ridiculous what you're telling me because you know nothing about fishing. Anybody that knows anything about fishing knows... You don't fish with a net during the daytime because the fish will see the net. Because the people, if they're going to throw the net, they will go in the wee hours of the morning and they spread the net out in the ocean. You don't do it in broad daylight. Tell your neighbor, if you want a ridiculous blessing, you have to obey a ridiculous instructions. Come on. How many want a ridiculous blessing? Then you got to obey a ridiculous instruction this morning. If you want a ridiculous blessing, you have to be willing to look ridiculous. I say you got to have to be willing to look ridiculous. You know, in these modern times, especially with all the accessories and things now that all these women wearing and stuff like that, the Lord is moving in such a mighty way and tears running and, and messing up your mascara, but you have a dignified cry. <laughs> because you're afraid to look ridiculous because what they, will, what they will look like, somebody might take a selfie of you and post it. But I remember when I go to church, when I used to go to church as a young man. And those pe- people would have come out and pray for individuals. They didn't care about what mascara run or not. Uh, are you hearing me? If snappy nose, what kind of thing, water running all over the place. They didn't care because why? They were persistent and they wanted God they meant to answer their prayer. So you got to be willing to be ridiculous. Are you hearing me? If you feel to run around the church, run. 
You feel good, dance, dance. Don't let nobody stop you because you understand, amen, what you're doing this morning. I got to be have a ridiculous praise because I want a ridiculous blessing. Are you hearing me? Two more minutes. That's ridiculous, huh? Maybe don't preach for an hour already. Two more minutes? Wow, that's ridiculous. A ridiculous instructions bring a ridiculous blessing. Are you hearing me? The Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 1 to 7, it tells us about a story of a little widow woman whose husband died and left her in death. And they were coming to take her sons to make them, amen, bondsmen to pay off the debt. And she received an instruction from the prophet. And the prophet said to her, go borrow some empty vessels. Then take that little pot of oil that you have and pour it into those vessels. How ridiculous this morning it must have looked for that widow woman this morning and her two sons to be running all over town borrowing empty vessels. Empty containers. What are you going to do with them? Somebody may ask. I'm going to fill them with oil. Where are you getting the oil? Well, I got a little pot of cooking oil. In the cabinet. That's ridiculous. A little pot of cooking oil wouldn't fill up all of these containers. But the little woman obey this morning the ridiculous instruction. Are you in? She obeyed this ridiculous instruction. And the Bible says she obeyed and she went and get the containers. What did she do with it? She obeyed the word of the prophet. She went and closed the door behind her with her sons. And they took that little pot of oil and started pouring it in. You be obedient to God. Let God do the rest. We wondering how, how God is going to do it. I don't know. You just follow instructions. Are you hearing me? Follow instructions. You see, we have the capacity to follow instructions. Because some of the medications some of you take in, if you don't follow instruction, you kill yourself. Because you don't want to overdose yourself. And if you could be so particular in your medication, why not obey God's instruction the same way? You to study how much dose is working for you in your body or not. You're concerned about what is taking place. You want the, re the, the results. Is that so? You want to feel better. Is that so? You think about the chemistry with, with the, the, all the different things that are mixture I mean, that is going in your body. You don't pay attention to that. Because whatever the doctor prescribes and it's going to work, you want the results. Are you hearing me? So you're willing to obey. CVS put a quotation. Follow instruction. Right head, follow instruction. And we do it. What about follow what the word of God says? Are you hearing me? I'm trying to get you to place this morning because God said to tell you a ridiculous blessing is coming. But in your path, you got to believe, amen, and be faithful and obey the ridiculous instructions. Amen. Let the team come this morning. Naaman was a leper. He was a rich man. Naaman, the commander of an army. But he was sick and he had leprosy. Are you hearing me? But he wanted to be healed. He wanted deliverance. His money couldn't help him. In fact, when he inquired about and heard that there was a prophet that can heal him, he thought, well, he could carry money so he can pay for it. The money was no use to him at that time. But the prophet gave him an instruction this morning. Go dip in the river Jordan 
seven times. Somebody say seven times. You see, if you're going to receive a ridiculous blessing in your walk with God, when God gives you a word, a ridiculous instructions, it will have, hear me now, it's going to have a lot of up and a lot of downs. A lot of up and it's going to be, have a lot of downs. Not every day is going to be up. Because the Bible says, the prophet told him to dip how many times? Seven. The first time he went down, nothing happened, right? The second time he went down. In fact, in his mind, he said, why send me to the Jordan River when there was other rivers? I could go clean waters. You tell me, go and dip in a muddy water? Because logic sat to get into his mindset. And you have to go against the logic and the reasoning. God wants to see how far you're going to obey his instruction. And the Bible says on the seventh time. It's only on the seventh time when he went down and he came up that he was completely healed. Amen. That's how to obtain a ridiculous blessing. Are you hearing me? How many, how many of you desire the ridiculous blessing? Amen. So obey the ridiculous instructions. And know that there will be a lot of ups and downs. But don't give up. There are some days you don't feel good. Don't give up. There are days you feel like giving up. Don't give up. God understand that they will have some ups and downs. But if God give me a word. And he says if you cast your net. You will catch fish. And the Bible tells me that when he obeyed these ridiculous instructions, the Bible says somehow the fish get into those nets. Are you hear me? And it was too much for him. And the Bible says that he called other boards to come. Some of you here today are holding back other people from getting blessed because you have to stand on that ridiculous instructions and follow it to the path. Because when you do, somebody else is going to be blessed because of your obedience to a ridiculous instruction. So you're not holding back yourself from the blessing. You're holding back somebody else from being blessed. Are you hearing me this somebody? So come on, just rise to your feet this morning and give God a ridiculous praise. Yes, Lord. Your goodness and your mercy will follow me. Yes, Lord. Will follow. Will follow. Will worship you. Will follow me. Your goodness and your mercy, Jesus, will follow. Will follow. Follow me. I believe it. I will follow me. I believe it to the Jesus. Your goodness and your mercy will follow. Will follow. Chapeau Lord, say hand on my side. Hey. We're gonna follow what God says. I believe this morning I came with great faith believing that my God is able to bring the ridiculous blessing to you I have done my part and my instructions to deliver this message to you it's up to you now to obey the ridiculous instructions that God has spoken into your spirit here today and you got to just follow it in its entirety. Don't stop. Not just go out there in the boat. But it's time to let down your net. And the Bible says, he told Peter, cast the net on the right side. So in other words, there's a wrong side. You can, you can choose to throw the net on the wrong side. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can hold to the word, but give in to reasoning also. But I want you to know, when you hold to God's word, you're not only going to get the boat out in the deep you're not only they're going to cast down the net you're going to cast it on the right side because you are obeying the ridiculous instruction this morning somebody said we're going to do it right we're going to do it right this morning come on lift your hands this morning everybody yes oh, 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 i put my trust in you jesus 
gonna fall on you. Your goodness, your goodness, and your mercy, and your mercy will fall on me. Yes, Lord. I believe in Jesus. One more, time. one more time, we'll find I've been through the problems, Jesus. But today, right now, I claim the victory. Oh, your goodness will follow. Hey! I'm going to. Now, I want you to hold that person's hand next to you. Because Jesus is speaking. It's the ridiculous instructions that come in with ridiculous blessing. And if you adhere to what the Word of God says today, I want you to know you can experience the best that God has for you. Don't fight or give in to reasoning or logic or the disappointments. Giving to the instructions of the master that he says whatever you're experiencing now the drought is over he says this too shall come to pass that there will be amen in that breaking amen type of blessings coming your way because now you have heard the instruction that the Lord is given today that I'm going to receive this because I'm going to choose to believe what God says. I have something to work with. And that is one word from God. I'm going to follow his instructions and it's going to bring the blessing. Father, right now, every person as they join hands together, I decree, oh God, and I prophesy over their life today. That God, every person will, oh God, Father, adhere to the ridiculous instruction, oh God. I pray they will follow, oh God, Father. They will be obedient, oh God, to the instructions that you have given them today. That Lord, that you are saying to them from the very initial, oh God, that is going to come to pass. That God, our situation are going to change, God. God, Father, we're going to come out of debt. God, Father, we're going to come out of the bind that we find ourselves in. God, we're going to, oh God, break free this morning. Oh God, from being incarcerated in one way or the other. God, Father, whatever we are faced with this morning, God, we're going to experience, oh God, the blessings of Almighty God. I pray that this day oh God as the word was spoken from Jesus mouth to Peter oh God father I know that the life of Peter was changed oh God that father that he worship him oh God because he recognized that he is the problem solver I pray that every person will put their faith and trust in Almighty God I pray that we have sang that he is mighty I pray Lord that oh God you will experience in every asset of our life this morning oh God a new season so I declare today I declare today that we not just be hearers of the word I declare today that we will be doers of the word God, I pray right now that you will recalibrate, Almighty God. And I pray, Almighty God, Father, the fishes is going to come in our direction. Oh God, the fishes are going to, oh God, swim into our nets this morning. I pray, God, the blessing is going to come, oh God, Father, where we have, oh God, Father, stand upon your word. God, Father, for what we are believing you for. Oh God, as we stand obedient to that word, oh God, we're going to experience the blessing coming in that direction God we are positioning ourselves for the ridiculous blessing here today and I pray God that every mindset will be changed God I pray a new season come into their life God I pray they will follow heavenly obedient obedience instructions and I pray God that father they will oh God rejoice in the ridiculous blessing that God that you have for them in Jesus name if you believe that somebody shout hallelujah Jesus. 
Come on, clap your hands, holy people, this morning. Just clap your hands if you believe that this is what God is saying. Just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm expecting my ridiculous blessing. Come on, one more time, tell, turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, I'm expecting my ridiculous blessing. I see some of you women, women know how to say it. Because the day when you got pregnant and you were carrying your child and you were so excited about that baby that you were, you were carrying or you were just, just so happy that the doctor says that, that you, were, you have conceived in your womb and you're going to you tell everybody, I'm expecting. Yeah, they, they already know what you're talking about. I'm expecting because you see the joy that you're speaking. Come on, somebody. I'm expecting this morning. These couple days, I felt to eat, eat chow, mango chow, the hot stuff. And when they have a saying back in Trinidad that if you eat, you have this craving for hot stuff, maybe you're, you're expecting. My wife tell me, don't expect nothing. But I want you to know, I had to tell you, because the spirit quickened something in my spirit. I said, maybe this is just a, this a, 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 a local expression. But I feel this morning that I'm expecting because there's a birthing of some children this morning. Hallelujah, somebody. So I'm expecting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's go in a praise. Yes, Lord. I'm trading my sorrow. Oh. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying, I'm laying, laying them down, down for the joy of the Lord. Yes. I, yeah. I'm trading my shame. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. We say, Come on, let me see you. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Hey. That's right. Hey. Let's go to the verse. Let's go to the verse. I am pressed but not crushed. Prosecuted, not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond a curse. Will endure. Joy gonna be my strength. Do the sorrow may last for a night. Joy comes in the morning. In mass. Yes, Lord. Yeah, hey, 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 come on, come on. Hey, yeah, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Here we go, here we go. We say, we say, we say, yes, Lord. Music, let me hear you sing. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes I believe you for my blessing. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord amen. Listen, you don't see what I'm seeing, but a couple of young people caught a fire in the back. Hey! Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Lord. That's right, Brother Dave. Yes, Lord. Yes, somebody, yes, somebody yes, say yes to Jesus. Yes, Lord. Listen, you're gonna go home, you're gonna go home, but let's do it one more time. We say, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Hey. Yes, Come on, Lord, hey, hey, yes, hey, Lord, hey, Lord, hey, Lord, hey, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, 
sing it to Jesus. Claim that healing today. Come on, ladies, lift your voice and sing it one more time. Yeah. been believing you Jesus I'm going to go but I give up now I'm not about to give up now amen everybody here we go jump jump Listen, you've been climbing a mountain and you reach to the top. <laughs> you say, God, I've been tired. I fell down many times. I bruised my knee, but I kept on going. Lord, you kept me until today. I'm on a mountain top. I'm going to rejoice, we say. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's, that's a place to rejoice because we're expecting. Amen. We're expecting. I want to thank everybody for coming and for being a part of this experience this morning. The Lord is on our side. And as you go, go with this word that I'm expecting my ridiculous blessing. And so as you continue to, to follow this ridiculous instruction and obey, God is going to give you the ridiculous blessing. I would like very much to, to encourage you. We have Sunday experience, but we have Wednesday, Wednesday experience.